Senator John F. Kennedy has said time and again that the youth of West Virginia is its greatest hope. That is why the senator in his campaign tour has, whenever possible, visited the colleges and the high schools in the various communities. Here is the senator at Morris Harvey College in Charleston. An overflow crowd of students and townspeople filled the vast auditorium. Doctor, thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Peters, ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate the honor of being invited to address this distinguished body. I am uh, traveling around West Virginia, as you know, as one of a series of itinerant candidates for the Democratic nomination. In his formal talk, the senator spoke of many things of vital interest to the state, but primarily he made clear his views on education in West Virginia. Here in West Virginia, where you have also faced extremely difficult problems since the end of the war, this is the solution for this state. And I think it is a fact that West Virginia has spent more than 45 of the other 50 states in the field of public education in the last few years. Fifth in the country, which I think indicates the great role that you see for education, higher education, education such as you are receiving. The federal government had always recognized the close relationship which must exist between a free society and an educated society. During his talk, Jefferson Senator Kennedy covered many other issues important to West Virginia, such as unemployment, area redevelopment, coal research, increase of minimum wages, medical aid to the aged. Many of these people over 65 live in bad housing. Many of them are chronically ill. I don't think that the, the Republican proposal is particularly good. It provides for direct appropriation by the government, a drain on the states which are already hard-pressed, as well as the federal government, instead of providing the Social Security system, which permits it to be self-liquidating and self-financing. In short, I believe that the Ferran Bill approach is better through Social Security. Then there were questions from the students. Yes, and from the townspeople. For example, here is Walton Shepard, Charleston attorney, asking, in effect, how the senator's religion would affect the discharge of his duties as president. West Virginia, as you know, has... Uh, less members of my faith in any state in the United States. Population is about three or four percent. If I had felt that there was a inhibition in my ability to fulfill my oath of office, which I've taken on the five times I've been elected to the Congress, and which I took when I entered the service, then of course I would not have come to West Virginia. I mean, I'm not wholly uh, without some uh, judgment. And if I felt there was some reason why I could not answer your question, that I am as prepared and able to fulfill my oath of office as any other American, then quite obviously I would not have run in West Virginia, nor would I have run for the presidency, nor would I take, as I have taken on many occasions, the same oath that the President of the United States takes, to defend the Constitution. Now, there is nothing in my religious faith which prevents me from executing my oath of office. If I thought that there was, I wouldn't take it. If I thought there was, I shouldn't be not a president. I shouldn't be senator. I shouldn't have been congressman. To be frank with you, I shouldn't have been taken into the service of the United States. Because on that occasion, in 1941, I also swore to uphold and defend the Constitution. Now, I had been in the uh, service of the United States. I spent three years in the hospital afterwards. My brother was killed in the war. My sister's husband was killed in the war. I'd like to know whether there's some opinion that I am unable to uh, fulfill my office of citizenship. I, there isn't. And I think that I wouldn't have come in West Virginia unless I felt that the, the people of West Virginia believe in the Constitution, sec Article 1, which provides for the separation of church and state, and Article 6, which says there shall be no religious test for office. That's why Massachusetts was founded. Maryland, a good many of the southern states were founded on the principle of religious freedom. I believe in that. And we will have a chance to see whether uh, there is going to be a an opportunity to discuss the serious issues facing the United States in a very dangerous and trying time. I don't happen to believe that one of those serious issues is where I go to church on Sunday. What better answer for West Virginians as to their position on this question than this enthusiastic applause?